Jace, uh, first off, uh, it's, it's been a wild time for you. I know that going back even to spring ball, uh, now let you know that there's not going to be any fall football for you as well. What What's uh, going through your mind right now? Um, really right now, it's we've kind of been in the back of our heads. We've kind of been – it's been there. Like, it's not like we always had to prepare like there was going to be a season, and that's what we – we were playing for, but in the back of our minds, we kind of always knew this was a possibility, so we kind of had to be ready for it. And, but we've been working our hardest to if we did have a season. But I mean, right now, I mean, I'm just I'm happy that I, I think the NCAA is going to allow us to not lose a season because of it. So as long as I get a last full fall, then I'll be fine with it. I'm almost I'd honestly rather have a last normal fall with fans and everything than have seven games worth nothing. So I'd rather come back and do it another year the right way, so. Jace, with the season that you had last year, how much does it sting, you know, because of what you did last year and not being able to have that opportunity to get back, you know, this fall? Yeah, it hurts a lot because, I mean, all winter, winter wasn't easy because, I mean, when you go four and seven, you got you got to work really hard to get back to see what happened what went wrong and see how you can get back to where you were before that and so we worked really really hard we thought we had a really good winter we thought we had a really good summer going so it stinks that we have to wait a whole nother year to come back out and see if our work uh, kind of paid off but I think we get a whole nother year we we had a really young team back in 2019 and I think our offense is I think everyone should be coming back so I think we're going to get another chance to those guys to grow a little bit older so I think we'll be even better off. Hey, Jace, what kind of mindset are you going to take into the off season as far as getting ready for, you know, hopefully games in the spring, uh, if not the fall? Um, I, it's, it's hard for me because I've taken every class like my employee has to take. So I really don't know what academically I'm going to do at this point. And I don't know. I mean, I haven't, I haven't figured it out a hundred percent what I'm going to do with that, but I will, I mean, we can't approach it any differently. This is uh, if we play in the spring, this is spring ball for us in the fall. If we play in the fall, this is winter, I guess. I don't know. However you want to say it, we're going to prepare the same way either, either way. So we're preparing like the earliest we could play is the spring. So we're preparing like we're playing in the spring. That's what we have to do. So we're going to do that whether we play in the spring or the fall. What do you know about workouts and kind of a, a practice schedule here in the fall now? Um, we haven't got a definitive answer because I think the NCAA may have just released the guidelines like yesterday or two days ago on what we can do. And I don't, so I don't know hundred percent sure, but I do know, I think we're going to try and get some of our fall practices or our spring practices back that we missed in the fall and try and, cause I mean, if you're an incoming freshman last year and you redshirted, you still haven't ever stepped on a field as an Emporia state, like besides, unless you, you were a redshirt player, you were a scout team player, you haven't actually stepped in and ran our offense or our defense yet. So they, those guys really need a spring, so to say, to learn the offense, learn the defense and get their feet under them and see if those guys can contribute. So I think this fall, hopefully we can do that and we can just continue to lift like we have been since winter and getting better from there. You're doing okay. Now, now we kind of know. I, we've talked last week, and the thing you always wanted to say, we just want to know what we're able to do. Now you kind of have an idea of what you're able to do. Uh, what's maybe the, the thought process for your football team for this fall? Um, well, it's, it's definitely, uh, you know, tough, and because everybody does want to play. Uh, but, you know, my first initial thought through this whole time, the last – week and a half uh, after I, I met with the team, I think about it's about a week and a half ago, is just, uh, you know, their, their mindset and uh, making sure that they are good mentally, you know, because they have put, like Jay said, the guys have put in a lot of work, a lot of time, been through a lot this summer, uh, you know, as far as with workouts, with testing and everything. And our guys, I just can't say enough of how proud I am of my players you know, unfortunately, it's it's tough when they when you know you're not going to play a season, and, and again, you put in a lot of work. So, uh, but you're right, we do know now. So uh, now we just have to wait and and see exactly what we're going to be able to do with them this fall, which we will be able to do uh, some things with them, uh, which I think will be good for us. You know, we still got a lot of improvement 
uh, to make just it coming off the year that we had last year. So, and, and we were, were unable to get any spring practices in. So uh, that, that'll be the next thing, kind of seeing what uh, we can do with them this fall. And we kind of already have a plan in place. We just may have to change a few things. Have you been able to uh, address the team yet today? And if so, what was your message to them? You know what? I have not addressed the team today. I actually met with them about a week and a half ago, and I really kind of prepared them for this moment uh, because I, I knew once the NCAA had came down, not only with us not being able to have a postseason, but also when they mandated the testing. And that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest uh, hurdle because financially, you know, at our level, schools cannot – uh, you know, afford that, uh, you know, testing all your student athletes 72 hours before a game. And, and uh, we went through the testing this summer. So I know how that can be, especially like when you're waiting to see what the results are. are. Uh, so I knew it was coming. So I think our guys and Jace kind of mentioned it a little bit. I think they've been prepared for this moment. Uh, so, uh, but, but we start school on Monday and they, they have, they're also taking another test and we won't be able to meet with them in, 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 until they get that completed. So hopefully I will be able to get with them and have a team meeting middle part of this week. Hey coach, what's kind of your message to players as to you know, anything they could learn from this experience or how you hope they kind of navigate the fall? Yeah, well the first thing that I talked to them about is, uh, you know, number one, we, we have not, uh, been through a spring practice so as long as we can get some type of practice with them this fall and continue to get better uh, that that's a plus uh, even though you're not playing games because you got to look at you got to try to find the the silver lining and you got to try to find you know something positive to tell them the other thing is that hey you came to Emporia State number one to get an education to get your college degree you know so let's not forget about that uh, number two, I think we have a culture here that's really close-knit group of guys. I think we will have a lot of guys that will stick around. Uh, and then, you know, we just have to uh, just make sure that we are doing the things necessary, uh, you know, all the, following all the guidelines to, to make sure that eventually we will have a season, you know. And we just got to take a step back and reset. That's what we got to do. And we weren't very good last year. We struggled. So as a head coach, I do look at it as opportunities for us to continue to get better. Hey, coach, you just mentioned you're hoping all your guys stick around. Is um, I think a lot of programs that aren't playing football in the fall or, or having any fall sports, that could be a challenge. How, what are you going to tell these guys, that, that, you know, especially those from out of state that came to Emporia just to play football? Well, I think hopefully, like I said, and, and again, this isn't going to be the case for everybody, but hopefully just how they have have been a part of our football program, whether they're here a year or two years or three years, that they feel like, you know, it's a family-oriented program and that there's a lot of reasons to stay, not just because of football, okay? The environment that they're in uh, each and every day with this football program. And like I said, you know, uh, getting their college degree. You know, I mean, in Division Two. Uh, if you look at the odds, uh, the stats, you know, I mean, there's guys that they're not going to the NFL at this level. All right. But they do have that opportunity to get a college degree. And, and I feel good about our guys coming back. I mean, our guys want to play. Uh, there could be seniors that decide not to, which I definitely understand that too. Some of, you know, they may want to go on and, and, and get a full-time job and get on with their life. Uh, but that's just part of it. And the, the other message that I gave him is look, guys, look across the country. Everybody's going through this. Okay, so everybody that's sitting in the chair you're sitting in right now has had this conversation. You know, a coach has had a conversation with their team about what could happen and, and the possibilities of not playing uh, in the fall. You know, and if you look at some of the other D2 conferences, a lot of them made that decision, or you know, a month ago. Uh, so their players have had to, to deal with it. I, I also brought up the fact that you know, our women's basketball team, they're playing the NCAA tournament, and they're warming up uh, to, to, to play for – to, to have an opportunity to play for a national championship and they get told their season gets cut short. So again, we're all in this thing together and nobody's different than anybody else. We just have to have to get through it and have to be, have to find the, the positive things that we can build upon uh, as a program and also uh, as an individual. The uh, CEOs uh, left the door open to possibly playing some games in the spring. Is that something that intrigues you? It intrigues me if they don't mandate the testing. All right, and because that's the holdup. I mean, 
again, if you still have to test, you still have to pay money. Okay. And, and that to me is where, uh, financially it's a burden. I mean, it really is. If, if, and I'm not, I wasn't good at math. I did pass math here, but, uh, I looked at it the other day. If we were just to play four games, say you tested 80 people per, per game, and it could be more, especially at home, that's about 34, $35,000. Uh, that you're spending on just testing alone. And, you know, that's, um, that's a lot of money, uh, you know, for a school. So, but I would be all for that uh, because we want to play, but we want it to be some type of competitive nature too. Yeah. And our players do, I have visited with them and that they have spoken that, or they, they mentioned that to me that, uh, you know, that they, they want to be able to play for something, even if it's just a conference championship, uh, you know, however that would work. Uh, the playoff deal really kind of hurt their mindset too, you know. Uh, so we'll just have to kind of assess the situation as we go. Uh, at what point did it kind of sink into you, or I guess hit you that there wouldn't be a fall sports season? I know today was the official announcement, but did that kind of NCAA requirement, is that when you kind of figured this wouldn't be happening? Well, uh, you know, I kind of – we, and a lot of people have asked me that question throughout the course of the summer. And there were days I felt like we were going to play. And there were days that I felt like that we weren't just by what was going on in the, in the country. Uh, but once again, uh, the, the, the decision on the playoffs and then the, the guidelines, some of the guidelines that the NCAA put forth, I, that's when I realized that, hey, it's not going to happen, you know. And, uh, and that's when I got the team together just to kind of, talk to them and communicate with them because I thought that was important. Well, Kent, we've, we've talked with you numerous times over the last week and a half uh, about being able to, for not just football, but your other fall sports, uh, volleyball, soccer, cross country to compete in sports. Now the decision has been, I guess, put in cement, so to speak, by the MIAA CEOs. Uh, what's, your, what's your message to your coaches and trying to help them navigate uh, this territory obviously you did this back in the spring but this is maybe a little different because they've had a little more time to maybe think hey we might have a season we might not they they have and and i'm trying to look at it uh as as having a developmental year um that as as coach higgins has said you know you got a chance to concentrate on school we're going to be doing uh, you know team building and and skill practicing and, and all of this skill development. So there's some good positive things that can come out of it. Um, after you get over this initial uh, thing of I'm not going to be able to play or not going to be able to compete. And, and that's what was taken away from baseball and softball. And that was all, that was all of the, we're done and go home. And, and so uh, we, we weren't doing anything. So this has a little different look to it. Um, I hope it's a better look. Uh, we're we're going to try and make it that way. Um, but knowing that it's going to, you know, it's a bitter pill to, to swallow and you just want to say this, this can't be happening. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, but to see it happen is, is just a little surreal. So. The MIAA took a little uh, while longer to make the decision as opposed to the rest of the D2 conferences. Do you think, the the rest of the conferences that was the big impact or was it pretty much because of the testing that made this well decision? the the stuff from uh the august 11th when the when the board of governors canceled the postseason and then they did come out with the competitive uh uh you know testing requirements that if you compete against someone else this is what you're going to have to do and that was what the 12th and then we waited to uh, or yeah, was that the 11th, I guess, that it came out? And they said, we, we were all asking, okay, what if we don't play? And then the, the rules were, well, test everybody at the start uh, and, then, and then follow testing procedures as, you, as your university is doing for all students. And so the things that we were doing, we'll probably do some random testing if we have some, uh, some of the leftover funding to, to be able to, to utilize the, the student funding for that. Um, so we'll, you know, we're much more capable now of doing it uh, uh, well within the guidelines and, and uh, not have the competitive problems to worry about. 
Can, can you take us through the finances of the testing and just just how daunting it can be? Financially? Oh, it, it was, you know, when we first looked at it and it's like, okay, just testing everyone once, you know, was tens of thousands of dollars. And then, and then we have, you know, 400 student athletes. So take all of that times 400. And then you, um, and then if you're doing it multiple times, that certainly came into, uh, it came at the forefront of minds. I know the president and our administration worked really hard to get some aid, some federal aid uh, to, to help all universities start out with, uh, uh, you know, some funding to be able to test kids as they came back to school. And, and we're certainly, if that wouldn't have happened, um, we'd be even in, we'd be behind another, uh, uh, another speed bump. So. Are there any kind of long-term concerns you have about, you know, no season ticket sales and no, I guess that kind of thing. Very much so. Uh, and you know, you, you can put a dollar amount on, on how much, uh, how, how much revenue ticket revenue are you going to lose? How much corporate sponsorship money are you going to lose? We're, we're trying to salvage some of that, uh, with, with online stuff that Don is producing and, and to get somebody to have segments brought to you by or, or whatever. And, and, uh, and that, but, the thing that you cannot look at it, and you can't put a dollar amount on are the face-to-face -face engagement opportunities that you have with people, with donors, and, and when they come back on homecoming and, and everybody is feeling good and you, they get to see the old place and they, they get to go into the locker room and that, how much does that help us? It certainly does, and, but you just can't put a dollar figure on it. And so, I've met with our, our foundation uh, people and, and Shane Shively is the, the president over there is a, is a former associate AD. So he knows exactly what those, uh, uh, you know, what those opportunities mean uh, for face to face and we'll try and get creative, but that is the, is a real concern. And people don't really want to travel all, all that much either. That's, we can invite them here, but uh, you know, a lot of times everyone's a little nervous about, about everything right now. So, uh, that's, that could have the long-term effects that you were talking about. I think when, when we do come back, everybody's going to be so excited to come back. I think that, that we should have, um, you know, some really good, uh, initial, uh, uh ticket sales and, and fan engagement things. But, uh, uh, the long-term stuff with with uh, out of sight, out of mind, it, it kind of comes to comes to my head. So.